Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here, and today we're going to be chatting over Skype with CEO of Rock's Jewelry Shop in Austin, Texas, Taylor Watts. Taylor, welcome to Rave It Up. It is a pleasure to have you on the show today. How are you going? Oh my gosh, it's thank you guys so much for having me. First of all, it's such an honor. I'm really excited and can't wait to see what we have to talk about today. So welcome. It's actually the first time we're chatting someone in Austin, Texas, so this is very exciting. <laughs> and obviously, first time you're chatting to someone in Australia, I'm guessing? Yes, it is. This is my first Australian chat. <laughs> Yay! It's the first time for everything. Hopefully, I'll start it off really, you know, really, really well for you. <laughs> awesome. Now, for those who don't know, you are the CEO, or uh, CEO, as you like to call it, <laughs> of Rock's Jewelry Shop that I'm privileged to be an ambassador for, so thank you. And you've just celebrated two, your business's two-year anniversary. Congratulations. What did you do to celebrate? Except post on thank Instagram. <laughs> yeah, it's been a journey. <laughs> I'll say that much. It's Everyone thinks it's glamorous. It's not always glamorous. <laughs> This is, this is, this is totally glamorous. I'm excited to be doing this, but yeah. And thank you so much for being an ambassador. I, I, that ambassador program, it means the world to me and the whole team, you know, it's, you guys are kind of the foundation. So thank you so much for doing that and being a part of it. That's good. With post on Instagram, we could all tell that you were celebrating the two years. Otherwise we probably wouldn't have known. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you. Now, this show is very success-based and all about finding out how successful people become successful. So we'd love to go back to the beginning, if that's all right. So okay. beginning of this journey, first of all, we really want to know, was this always the plan or did you have other careers in mind? So I was a corporate geologist in the oil industry. Wow. <laughs> right? Um, I have a... I'm formally educated as a geologist and I used to do acquisition development and asset sales. Um, so very, very, very different than owning a woman owned jewelry company with an empowering woman collection, but like almost a completely 180 kind of deal. Um, and you know, I did that for a while and just realized that wasn't going to work for me. That wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. And it literally just hit me one day. I woke up and I was like, if I spend the next like 40 years of my life doing this, I'm going to wake up and be like, why did I do that? Someday I'm just going to wake up and regret it. And so, of course, uh, it was kind of a long process of, okay, when I knew I was going to leave, but like, when was the timing going to be right? Like, you have to have money to start a business. So I had to save up and um, then I also had to have, I knew I wanted to start a business because I've been that kid my whole life that has been starting businesses since I was like four years old. Like I'm pretty sure at like five years old, I made my own magazine and tried to sell cookies that I was baking to the neighborhood. It, you could order them through my magazine <laughs> by calling my home. I would have thought you would have started with like a lemonade stand or something. <laughs> yeah, no, that came after. <laughs> Yeah, so I've always just been a very entrepreneurial spirit. I think that's always been something I wanted to do. And it was kind of a mesh of how do I, like, I love fashion. I love jewelry. I love that kind of stuff. I just, it's my heart and soul. But I'm trained as a geologist. So it was like, how do I do all these things? And how do I, like, take this part and this part and this part and this part and make a business out of it? You know, I'm really, really, really passionate about um, giving back, you know, I think that there's so much love in the world and there's so many people that need something, you know, like housing, food, water, whatever, like people need things and that can't attain them. So that was a huge, huge reason for starting a jewelry company that also gave back to charity in the beginning. So that's, and I, I was making jewelry when I was working at the other job and people just kept coming up to me like, where'd you get that? Oh my God, I want one. Can you make me one? So it just kind of hit me. I was like, well, duh, maybe that's what I'm going to do. Like, it actually took my best friend being like, if like four people have asked you to buy a necklace you made, don't you think like maybe there's something you could do? And I was like, wow, you're so right. And now look at it. <laughs> yeah. Rest is history. And that's something I personally really love about it is that, you you know, when you buy something from the store, you can actually choose the charity that you want a little bit of the proceeds to go to. So yeah. thank you very much. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, 
You know, when I first started, when I very, very first, I tried to get lots of business advice from people that had been in business for a while. And everyone was like, don't give back to charity. Like, you don't have to do it. And I was like, I, I'm not going to like they were like, you're just going to like sacrifice your profit in the beginning and you don't want to do. It. I was like, well, like, I'm not going to start a business if it doesn't get back. That doesn't make any sense to me. Why would I do that? Because that's not really in line with like who I am. So we, it's a really fun business. We have like kind of a people over profit mentality that makes sense. So it's, it's always about the charity first, the people we serve second, and then, you know, everything else, everything else comes in after that, which is the I love that. That's fantastic. And what, what were like the first stages you took to get Rock's Jewelry Shop started? You know, how did you grow your following to what it is now? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> well, we actually started on Etsy because I wasn't convinced it would actually work. So I wanted to get, if I got a good response on Etsy, I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, get an LLC and make this a real business as opposed to just like a hobby business. So we launched on Etsy April 24th, 2017. And the response was just phenomenal. Like by June, we were making enough. I was like, okay, I need to start a website and get this going off Etsy and just, you know, grow. That was the gist of it. And so I was just kind of looking at it. I was like, who's going to connect with this product, right? You know, you have a product, you have to connect to an audience somehow. And for me, Instagram was just like a super natural way to do that. You know, that was kind of. I was just like, people that love Instagram might also love this. And I had enough like analytics data to know, yeah, that's probably true. So <laughs> then I read every single article on the internet about how to grow a following on Instagram and pretty much none of them worked. Really? <laughs> really <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so it was a lot of trial and error and trial and error. And then finally I was just like, you know, what? I'm just going to you know try and be really nice to people. So I was up. I, I kid you not until like 11 p.m. at night, like commenting compliments. Like I would just try and find people that I thought would be like my ideal customer. And then I'd find one of their pictures and, and like find something I could genuinely compliment about it. So they didn't know they didn't think like a robot was doing it, you know, because sometimes there's like, oh, great pick. I, I would be like, oh, my gosh, you know, that shade of orange looks really good on you. You go, girl, like something like that. <laughs> Like something that's just do that. And I would try and do that like 400 times a day. Wow. <laughs> Dedication. <laughs> yeah. And because I knew that if we couldn't get a big following, there was, it was going to be a lot harder to do it. And so I just kind of started trying my own things. Like I, like I went week by week. I'm a scientist by trade. So I would just like experiment. Essentially, I'd be like, okay, this day I'm going to do this and see how many people follow me. This day I'm going to do this and see how many people follow me. And then it just kind of snowballed after the first thousand followers the rest of them came like that oh, right word of mouth i think after that right yeah it was like after a thousand like i think a thousand is the barrier that was that's really hard to break for any brand you know because it's not like they're following a person they're following a brand so you have to make your brand content engaging you have to make sure you're not like saying anything that's going to offend people in a negative way, even if that's not your intention at all, you know, um, which I've learned now you're going to offend people no matter what you do. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, you, like it's, it happens. So, um, yeah, I, I just started being really, really nice to people on Instagram. And like, if I really, really liked a blogger or something, I would be all up on them like, please, can I just send you this for free? Please, I know you don't do free promotions, but, you know, it would just mean the world and I'll give back like $20 to charity of your choice if you'll just do this for me. And then I got some really big bloggers on board without having to pay, you know, like $200 or $500 for a promotion. So that was that was cool. That's nice because it fits in with who you are as well, you know, giving back and being nice to people. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I was like on such a strict budget when you first start, it's when you're first starting, like the budget's a lot, a lot stricter because you have so much startup costs. So I was just trying to minimize that as much as possible and grow as much as possible. So and how did you get your items? Did you do like deals with other companies to be able to kind of expand into clothing as well? And yeah, so it kind of happened by accident. Oh, really? <laughs> wouldn't have guessed that 
Yeah, so I was out one night with some of my girlfriends, and we met someone who's like, oh, you know, I sell apparel, and we sell wholesale to companies like yours that are completely online. I was like, oh, cool. So do you have anything? And I was like, I hadn't really even thought about getting into the apparel, anything. But we started out with uh, coffee mugs because there was a huge hurricane in Houston at the time, and I was like, I want to create a special coffee mug that all the proceeds will go to help the Red Cross in Houston at the time. So I was like, hey, can you do this for me? And they were like, yeah, we can do it. And then I realized it was a lot easier than I thought it would be. You know, I I always stayed away. I was like, that's not, you know, I'm really good at buying rocks. Like, I'm great at that. But like, I don't know what it's like to buy apparel and have to do all that. Like, that wasn't my niche. So I was kind of afraid. And then all of a sudden, it's kind of caught on and then people are like "Ooh, we want more shirts or we want more mugs or "Ooh, do you have accessories are you going to get sunglasses anytime soon so it kind of i took all the customer feedback like we have a form when you sign up to be an ambassador um where you can tell us like hey what do you want to see what's your favorite color what's your favorite stone like and i i literally read all of that like once a month i get sit there and like okay this is what people want so let's get that for them. Oh, so you must so. have read mine. <laughs> yes. Yes. Once upon a time amongst all the others as well. <laughs> yeah, I read a lot. <laughs> wow. I'm surprised you even have time. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> you got to create time and late nights and early mornings. <laughs> yeah. So I'm actually like an Excel wizard at this point. So I've just created a function that will read through it all and be like, 70% of them say necklaces, this, that, but will like take keywords, anything that's said more than like four times and be like, this thing was said like this many times, this many times. So that's kind of what I do too, to, because it's, it's gotten, we have like 7,400 ambassadors at this point. So it's gotten to like a crazy amount. I can't tell you how that happened. It just one day started going like, Ooh, that was like, oh gosh, this is going to be fun. So it was kind of a necessity point. In the very beginning, I did sit down and read every single one of them. I spent like an hour a day reading them. Wow. Well, technology is amazing. You're going to have to teach me how to do that. (laughs) Anytime. Anytime. Great. Thank you. (laughs) And you do sell uh, vegan items on the site as well, which I love because I'm vegan myself. Are you vegan as well or...? Was that just a demand? (laughs) That came in one of my best girlfriends. She is um, she is a vegan, and I wanted to name a necklace after her. And she goes, and this is when I first started out, and I had a ton of leather items. She goes, Taylor, there's nothing on your store I can wear. And I was like, Oh my gosh! I was like, Well, maybe I can figure something out. So then I went and started researching and figuring out like ethical ways to do things that looked like suede or this or that and found some great companies and great suppliers to work with and have an awesome relationship with them. It's really fun too. Like the vegan market, it's so different than any of the other markets I've ever worked in. You know, there's so much new, cool, like high tech stuff. So, but yeah, it was just because I wanted to name a thing after a friend and she was like, uh, nothing. I'm not going to wear any of these. Sorry, I'm a vegan. I was like, vegan collection. I, I, I enjoy the principles behind it. I'm personally not, but I respect the hell out of anyone who can do it. I really do. That's hard. Well, maybe in the future, who knows? It's becoming so much easier these days with so many options. Yeah. Yeah. Um, awesome. Now, companies like yours are sometimes perceived to be an overnight success, but, you know, that's rarely the case. And I love interviewing for this reason because we really get to let the listeners know that there's a lot of hard work involved. It's not what you just see on the surface. So can you take us through some of your hardships? You know, were there some times that you just wanted to give up? Oh, man. Yes. (laughs) I like honestly I've lost count but like the biggest thing you have to do to be successful is you can't give up and I've been through some like crazy things that like would have been completely justifiable if I did decide to give up like I spent like seven days in the hospital at one point and I was the only person working in my company so I had to literally work from a hospital bed and people were like just don't do it like calm down my doctor came in and was like what are you doing and I was like someone has to run the business sorry like I know I know you I, you told me not to but someone has to do it and like there so there have been so many points when I it would have been so easy 
especially like when you first start out and you think you're going to just automatically get crazy sales numbers because you had such a good launch and your numbers were so good and you're just going to grow 400% every month and then you realize, oh, maybe that's not going to happen. You know, it's I kind of call it beginner's optimism. But yeah, you end up learning a lot of lessons and you just have to, have to, have to create some way that you're like, no. For me, it's that there are so many charities that would benefit a lot less if I wasn't doing this at this point. So that's kind of what keeps me going. Like there, there are organizations that almost depend on us as one of their largest donors. So that's really cool. And that just kind of keeps me going. Well, it's great that you, I can see that you're just so passionate about it. So of course you're still going to do it in a hospital bed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> People were like trying to take my computer away and I was like, no. <laughs> These charities depend on me. <laughs> I was like, no, you don't understand. And I also do get, you know, it's hard. You get a lot of like hate mail, this, that, spam, whatever. But you also get like once in a blue moon, someone who like will write you a letter or say something like your business means so much to me. And this is why, like I've actually met some of my ambassadors and the stories they have and the places they come from and why the charity aspect means so much to them, that's been inspiring. You know, it's, it's kind of like the people have been really good too. And I have the best followers and customers in the world. I'm convinced. Well, I'm glad I'm, ho- I'm hoping they're listening today so that they can hear that you've uh, really appreciate them. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. You're amazing. <laughs> like actually this would not be possible without you. I hope you're watching. Um, but yeah. Now, you personally have over 10.8 thousand followers on Instagram, and Rock's Jewelry Shop has over 23.7 thousand followers. That is actually a current statistic because I checked it this morning. <laughs> and awesome. I think you are such an incredible role model, especially for fellow women. I've noticed that there have been a couple of posts on your Instagram where you write about the fact that you haven't always loved yourself. You know, you've had confidence issues. I think we all have as women, especially body confidence issues. And you even did not like that beautiful and sexy, like, silhouette photo of you on Instagram. I'm like, what is, wow, what? So for those fellow women listening today, how did you learn to love yourself and how long did it take? Or are you still struggling with it today? It's an everyday journey for me. I think a lot of it came, you know, sometimes you have an event that happens in your life and sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's just day after day after day, like telling yourself like, you're okay and I'm proud of you and I know we're getting somewhere and just working internally. That's a lot of it for me. It was a huge like eye-opening experience when I was in the hospital, like my lung collapsed and I almost died. So like, I began to like just be extremely grateful for my body and the fact that my body kept me alive when that happened, you know, and it was kind of showing myself that gratitude, which I know when we're kids and like teenagers, it's really, really, really hard because everyone wants to be the cool kid, the popular kid, the prettiest girl, this, that, whatever. I feel like someone needs to talk to the people that You know, I was made fun of in high school. I was actually kind of bullied, you know. I was like the redhead girl that barely wore makeup. And, you know, I sewed a lot of my own clothes just for fun. So, like, I was kind of like the weirdo. And now, look, I have 10,000 followers on Instagram. Thank you, guys. Y'all are great. (laughs) But, yeah, no, I mean, it's, I I think, beauty and self-acceptance, that's a huge thing that goes together. And And there are days, too, like, when I just look in the mirror and I have to like stop myself from saying something negative because I'm like, oh, you know, I didn't hit my like workout goal this week. I'm so fat. And it's like, no, you're not. Actually, I'm really proud of you. You're going to get it next week. Don't worry about it. Like, Because, you know, if you just keep putting your energy into the idea that you're not good enough, eventually you're going to feel that way. And eventually you feeling that way is going to make other people think that too. So it's like this bad feedback loop. Instead of just being like, hey, you're trying and I appreciate that you're trying, you know, that's that's really all it takes and it's a lot easier said than done, I know that. As they say, confidence is sexy. <laughs> yes. yes, could not agree more. 
And you find it, you know, so important for everyone to encourage each other. And you've really done that yourself by stepping outside your comfort zone and cutting your hair short after 10 years. How does it feel? <laughs> Just for fun. <laughs> Cut 12 inches off, no big deal. <laughs> it looks great, by the way, it suits you. <laughs> and it, it really shows that, you know, stepping outside your comfort zone is scary, but, you know, it gives you amazing results. <laughs> I'm still trying to learn how to style it, but I think I'll get there eventually. I don't know. It might get long again before I figure it out, but I don't know. <laughs> At least you've done it. You've, you know, taken that leap and you've posted yeah. on Instagram for everyone to see and encourage those other people that are a bit scared to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was really fun when it happened. I was just kind of like, I can't believe I'm doing this. Okay, we did it. Oh my gosh, we did it. <laughs> yeah, and then I was like, okay, now I need to learn how to style short hair. <laughs> yeah, I need to start looking at, you know, YouTube and Pinterest and things like that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I am working on getting better at Pinterest hair tutorials, but like, it's almost like, some black magic. I'm like, how do you do that? I'm so impressed with girls that do all these really complicated updos. I'm like, whoa, you're amazing. How do you do that? Like, I just watched this video and I just tried it and like, how do you do that? <laughs> I was like, okay, I don't even know if my arms like work that way. <laughs> like, let me just like tie a braid behind my head like this. I don't, <laughs> but no, it's been really fun. Like it's, it's a new fun learning experience. So it's been really cool. I think for all of us women, you know, it, it is quite hard to take that leap and actually cut your hair because, oh, you know, we're very protective of it. Yeah, you know, I didn't tell anyone. I told my boyfriend because we lived together and I didn't want him to just be like, whoa, what's going on? But he's he was super supportive. He was like, oh, my gosh, that would be cool. so cool. Like, do it. And I just didn't tell anyone else because I was like, I don't want anyone to try and talk me out of it. Like. I'm just not going to tell anyone until I announce it on Instagram. I didn't even tell my hairstylist before I came. I was just like, hey, I'm doing it. I was like, hey, uh, 12 inches, you want to take 12 inches off my hair? And she was like, what? Because I was like that girl that every single time in, I asked for like the most boring thing. I was like, no layers, yeah. nothing. Take like as little as possible off <laughs> and just keep it exactly the same. That was me for like the past 10 years. So this has been really interesting. <laughs> And then you just shocked everybody online. <laughs> you know, I just got a bug to like challenge myself and push myself. You know, I, I like to do that at least like once a quarter if I can do something that's totally out of my comfort zone just to like remind me I can do things. Keep it interesting. <laughs> Now, amazing story that I did learn about you on Instagram too, because, you know, Instagram's an amazing place, is that a year ago you received a chronic pain and intercostal nerve damage diagnosis, which I'd love yes. to chat to you about today. You did have a bulge in the top right-hand side of your abdomen, in case people mm -hmm. haven't checked out the story yet, and the entire section of your body was completely numb and was in pain whenever anybody touched it. So... Doctors yes. did say that nothing could be done, but now look at you, you know, you're really working on your abs and the bulge is gone. So can you tell us about your journey of, I guess, not accepting this diagnosis and now being numb and pain free? Yeah, so I, I guess I'm a little stubborn. Um, I had two different doctors tell me, like cardiothoracic surgeons be like, there's not really a cure for this. You know, there's nothing you can do. I've never seen anyone like bounce back from it. You just kind of are going to have to like learn to get used to it. And that just didn't sit well with me. I'm like, I, I tried to ask why and they couldn't give me. It's like, oh, we just, no one's ever done it. Like I've never, there's nothing you can do. And I just refuse to accept that. The scientist in me went and like, I read probably about like five scientific papers, which is all there are on the intercostal nerve and damage to it. <laughs> so I read everything and like nothing was giving me hope. And so I just kept going like doctor to doctor to doctor, trying to like get someone to like give me a little bit of hope, you know? And then finally I found a physical therapist that was doing some new stuff. And she was like, okay, we're gonna, the training's gonna really hurt. It's gonna be super hard. And you're just gonna have to be really committed because you're going to have to do this every day and you know I have to like do strange exercises not even like physical exercises like like having someone like write letters where I'm numb and have me not look and I have to try and guess what letter they wrote on my like 
stomach because that helps connect the brain, like the feeling part of your brain to the logical part of your brain. And so that is something that can help like rebridge those gaps. So yeah, it's called central desensitization. I think I said that right. Um, but yeah, so I had to do lots and lots of physical therapy for it. And then um, I just kept working. I do ab exercises like probably four times a week. And I specifically focus and you know, it's not easy. And it's, it, it like hurt really, really, really bad when I first started. And I was like, you want me to do a side plank when I can't feel my abs? I don't know if I can even do a side plank. Like, you know, and she was like, you're going to have to commit and like, you can't keep giving me excuses or else this isn't going to work. And so my physical therapist was amazing, by the way, like she's the best, but it was, it was a huge mental thing too. It was kind of just deciding that I was going to find an answer and I wasn't going to accept. No, there's nothing you can do because a chronic pain diagnosis when you're like 70, 80, that's bad, but it's not the worst thing that could happen. A chronic pain diagnosis when you're 23 years old, which was the age I was at the time, that's like, you know, three quarters of my life to have to live with that. So to me, I was like, that doesn't add up. I'm going to keep pursuing other things and other things and other things. And I, I even had to do like affirmations and things like that, which I was like so against affirmations (laughs) for the longest freaking point. I was like, I don't think saying anything out loud is going to make it better. I was just like, I don't believe that that's hippie stuff. Like I'm not going to do it. And then my like physical therapist was like, just do it. She was like, I need you to do everything I tell you to do. So if I tell you to do affirmations, you have to do affirmations. Okay. Like, do you want this to change or do you want to have nerve damage your whole life? You know, and it was kind of that tough love slash me being super stubborn and being like, yes, I'm going to get this done. That's kind of how I overcame it. And, you know, I took pictures like once a month of it because I couldn't tell if it was going like I could feel some of the pain was starting to like go away. And the numbness, I could start to slowly feel more things and feel more things. But I was seeing the pictures and then like realizing over time, wow, this from where I was last year to where I am this year, that was amazing. That was incredible. And I was, you know, I just, I'm so grateful, so grateful that I found like the right person to help me. Someone who else who was, it almost felt like on my side, you know, in a way. So yeah, that's how that happened. You should be so proud. It really shows how amazing the human body is that it can just, you know, bounce back. Yeah. And you know, I, through all of this, I've kind of just learned that you're so much stronger than you think you are. You know, like there are so many things that like I never thought I would be able to do. Like if you told me like two years ago, I would be doing 20 side planks a day and then like looping my other arm through the hole in my side plank. I would be like, um, no, like, uh, if you told me I would be like rock climbing 30 foot walls without a rope, I would say, uh, no, I'm not going to be doing that. Like no way. And then all of a sudden I'm here and I'm like, huh, that's funny. I'm totally capable of it. Well, congratulations. You should be so proud. Thank you. I am. I, you know, it's all been a huge, really exciting, emotional, but wonderful journey. So I'm just happy to be here doing what I do. (laughs) And even though you've already achieved so much in your career and just life in general, Taylor, what else can we expect from you in the future? I want to grow. I I want the business. You know, everyone's always like, how big do you want to big? And I'm like, how big can you imagine it? And then I'm like a little bigger than that. You know, I I just want to keep pushing and pushing and you know, I, I can't say much about it now, but I just sign, signed a huge agreement actually today with um, an organization that we're going to be working with. And I'm so pumped about that. And, you know, it's uh, the trajectory. It just I just want to keep growing. Um, I want to be able to hire more women. Men, too. I'll take men. Like, that's fine. I'm not <laughs> going to be sexist in the way I hire. But I, I just want to, like, be able to expand what we're doing and really empower women and really 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 make a huge impact so i'm gonna do whatever it takes really and i'll do whatever i can to as well to help promote you (laughs) oh thank you i appreciate that you know i can't say it enough you guys are amazing i can't like i can't say it enough thank you for even having me on this it makes me feel like i'm super cool (laughs) (laughs) 
you are. Like, look at what you've achieved and what you've grown from nothing. And I was a sad corporate worker like three years ago. <laughs> Isn't that weird? And now look at where you're sitting <laughs> in your own office. It's amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. It's great that you can uh, have some amazing support here in another country. <laughs> You know, I've always wanted to visit Australia. If I do, I'm going to have to, like, hit up your offices or something. That would be so fun. We could do a chat actually in person, not just over Skype. Oh, my gosh. That would be fun. Yes. <laughs> Let's do that in the future. Let me know if you if you come to Australia. You've got my details. so, And I can show you around the great places that are here. <laughs> yes, please do. Now, we are unfortunately getting to the end of the interview, Taylor. It's been a lot of fun and I've learned a lot about you. <laughs> well, but you. As I think a, that's a good thing. It is. I'm, uh, really good stuff. I think it would be amazing. Uh, everything that you've said today would be amazing advice for everyone listening. So thank you. But awesome. as a closing statement and was probably the most important question, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your 14 year old self? Oh man, I would say it gets better. <laughs> It gets way better after you leave your hometown and go and, like, do things with your life uh, outside of, like, live with your parents and, like, be in high school. And, you know, I would also say I'm actually pretty proud of some of the things, like, I did. Even as much as I wanted to fit in, I kind of refused to compromise in high school and, like, how I was going to dress or who I was going to be or, like, standing up for kids, like, that were being bullied, too, and stuff like that. Like, I would say that was really good and you're going to do some really awesome things. Um, but it's going to be hard. Like every good thing, there might be a bad thing too. You have to go through. It's going to, the scales are going to level out and you just have to be really strong. And I, I would tell her to stop being so hard on herself. Oh my gosh. I can't even imagine like why. And looking back, I'm like, why was I so hard on myself? I guess it was the hormones. I don't know. It doesn't make any logical sense to me. I shouldn't have been. I should have had more confidence. And, you know, now I do. And I I just want to like, give her a hug and tell her it's going to be okay. Like, it's going to be great, you know? So, yeah, that's what I would say to 14-year-old Taylor. I completely understand, though. At that sort of age, because of school, it's just so much peer pressure and wanting to fit in and... I think because you're trying to fit in, you are hard on yourself. Yeah. Well, I had a friend tell me, like, I didn't exercise in school once. Um, and your friends were supposed to tell you the best traits about yourself and the worst. And almost all my friends said I was too ambitious and I needed to have more realistic expectations for what my life was going to be. And can you imagine, like, what that means is, like, Oh, you can't like you're not physically capable of doing this like you can't do any of these things like I told people I wanted to be a model and people like someday and people laughed at me like in my face like you are gonna be a model <laughs> yeah look at me now. <laughs> sometimes you have to branch out to be able to look back I don't know <laughs> yeah absolutely and have even more respect for what you've actually gone through such a strong woman you are <laughs> oh thank you no you're welcome <laughs> And thank you so much for coming on the show today. It's absolutely been so much fun and a pleasure. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome on any time. So in the future, if you want to chat about anything, let me know. Okay, sounds awesome. Great. We'll keep in contact and we'll make it happen. And also let me know if you're ever in Australia. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh, my gosh, it'll be so fun. <laughs> it's on the list of places to travel, okay? <laughs> It is. It's actually, I have like a, I have a travel list that's like this long. You can't even see. <laughs> but I will hit them all. Well, I hope you all enjoyed today's interview. If you'd like to check out any of our other interviews, visit our website, raveituptv.com. All the podcasts and videos are there for you to enjoy. But for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.